crankshaft that we've got set up here between centres with the uh, dial gauges on it is um, for a Royal Enfield Model G, which um, out of all the Asbo bikes, I've only done one of this kind before and uh, that was actually one of the Model G's predecessors, the Model CO, um, although I think it was a mixture of CO and G parts and it was Asbo number 28 and I refer to it as the G-Wiz. Well, this is um, Asbo 39, and I guess it's going to be the G-Wiz too. And I've split the flywheels and I've lightened them in the usual manner, or the same manner as I did as, as the last set like this, which um, actually meant I took very nearly a kilogram off each flywheel for this type. Um, so we've got nearly two, kilogra two kilograms reduction of weight overall on uh, this which is more than I normally take off the later type bullet 500s and even the uh, later type 350s when I lighten them but here we are we got it in between centers again and as usual this clock reads in thousandths of an inch so the naught to the 5 is five thousandths of an inch this clock reads in uh, tenths of a millimeter so the naught to the 10 is actually 0.1 of a millimeter uh, or four thousandths of an inch, we've got five thousandths of an inch there, so they're very similar as I've said in previous videos. Let's uh, take it round to the point, there you are, both clocks, needles are on the zeros there. And if I rotate the crank, you see as I rotate it, that there is movement in the needles on the clock faces, but they move in the same direction at pretty much the same time. So. I'm seeing perhaps three thousandths of an inch run out on this shaft here and actually probably about three thousandths of an inch there because from the naught to the uh, next number would be um, four thousandths of an inch, it's not that much, so it's about three thousandths of an inch there, three thousandths of an inch there. They're moving in the same direction at the same time, so effectively when those shafts are in the main bearings, those runouts there will become zero and um, any movement, slight movement, will be transferred to the extreme ends of the shafts and perhaps back to the flywheels a little, but uh, that three thousandths of an inch runout, if you want to call it runout, will be halved by the time it's shared between the ends of the shafts and the flywheels, so the maximum run out that there'll be anywhere would be one and a half thousandths of an inch, and there'll be effectively no run out or zero run out at the main bearings. So I'm very unlikely to get better than that. So, what I'm going to do with that is I've got this uh, crank pin nut tightened up. Um, there's no locking screw in there because the threads in the flywheel were stripped, so I've used. Uh, a thread locking compound on the nut. Um, this nut here is done up tightly, the threads are okay for the locking screw so I'll get it out of the uh, lathe now and put the locking screw in and this crankshaft will be ready to go in the engine. So um, here we are, I'm very happy with that and I've got to weigh it yet as well but uh, I think overall it's probably going to be around about not far off two kilograms lighter than a standard Model G crankshaft so that should liven the engine up a little bit as well.